So in this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of how to do a live stream using the Canon EOS M6 Mark II while also getting unlimited record time while recording on your computer. So the challenge that typically comes up, anybody who has a Canon camera, typically the simplest and easiest way to do live streaming with a decent quality image is to connect the camera via USB-C into your computer and use a software called the EOS webcam uh, utility. Uh, and so this is something that's available through Canon's website. Um, if you'd like, if you type in, uh, just even if you Google, so EOS webcam utility. And uh, when you go to the website from there, you'll, it's the easiest, simplest way to start streaming right away. However, there are some caveats. The caveat number one is even if you start, let's say you open up Zoom, um, and which is a very common platform for live streaming, and you decide, hey, you know what? I want to record whatever is being streamed on Zoom locally, especially if you're the one who started the live stream. The downside is even the highest quality recording on Zoom is gonna be about 720p, and that's because the output via USB that is going into the computer and that Canon is then um, uh, processing, the highest resolution is gonna be 720p. At the same time, let's say you're not the host of the meeting on Zoom. Let's say uh, you are an attendee and then that video is then, let's say, redistributed to YouTube or some other places. It's actually tends to be about 480p unless you dial in your settings within the Zoom video settings that you might get 720p, but that's a long way from the 4K that the camera is able to record. So for anybody who wants to get the maximum quality of your stream output, instead of using the EOS webcam utility, um, you will use a video capture device, something such as say um, a Camlink Elgato uh, 4K, which is a video capture card, something that looks like this. Um, uh, it goes for like a hundred bucks or so. Um, and this device um, allows you to take the HDMI output. In this case, it's a micro HDMI output from your Canon camera to an HDMI input on the Camlink uh, 4K. And then the computer is able to detect that there's an HD stream coming in. Now the challenge with using a Canon camera is that when you are streaming via HDMI, you have to set it so that on the camera, you're getting a clean HDMI output. And so um, typically, what does that mean? So let me, I'm gonna go ahead and, now if you don't have a clean HDMI output, this is essentially what you're gonna be streaming out to the world. Now, uh, on the back of your Canon camera, you, there's an option for you to press the info button. So if I were to go back here and I just press the info button once, some of that information disappears, but then you're gonna be stuck with the autofocus face tracking indicator and everybody's gonna be able to see that and you don't want to broadcast to the world. Now, the way that you can turn that off is you simply go over to your Canon camera and you turn off the autofocus and now you're in manual focus. But you're in manual focus. So if I move out of my field of view or I move into my uh, camera, it's not gonna track me. So you always have to make sure that you're in this specific field of view in order to be able to um, get that. Now, while you're in this mode, you have the ability to uh, record on camera, but this moment you press record, you're gonna be seeing that it's recording and the whole world is going to know this recording. It doesn't look good. It doesn't look professional. So how do you uh, circumvent all of this? Well, first of all, if you want to get a clean HDMI feed out, what you got to do is you have to go into the menu and make sure you have a yeah, clean HDMI enabled. So from here with info, you go to clean 4K output. And then essentially everything that's going to be on your screen, uh, whatever you're feeding via HDMI is going to be completely clean. Uh, while on your LCD screen, you'll be able to see all of that information, whether it's the face tracking, what your settings are on your camera, all of that. So 
But the challenge now is when you're in clean HDMI output, you press the record button, it's not gonna record. So the way to do your recording is that you have to do it on your computer. And the way to do that is you need to download and install a software called OBS Studio. It's a free software. Um, so if you go to obsproject.com and from here, uh, just based on your operating system, whether it's Mac, Windows, or Linux, I'd be very surprised if you're using Linux, uh, but generally Mac or Windows is your standard operating software. So pick that, download it, and install the software. Once you've installed the software, um, after that, you're gonna wanna fire up uh, OBS Studio. Now this is before you've started your stream. You gotta make sure your camera's on, you've got it powered. So typically when you're operating this camera, you don't wanna be using it on battery because the battery life is not gonna be very good. So you're gonna to wanna to be using a dummy battery, which I'm assuming you already have. At the same time, uh, you're gonna be wanting to have some sort of microphone. You can get yourself either, it, so I'm assuming you have something like a Rode Wireless Go, uh, which is a wireless receiver and, or transmitter and receiver. Um, or in my case, uh, what I'm using, alternatively, I've come to enjoy a thing from DJI, uh, which is essentially a whole um, um, microphone system where you actually end up with uh, two rec uh, recorders and uh, receivers, or, or rather two transmitters and a receiver. And each of these transmitters, I'm wearing one right now, uh, each of these transmitters also records internally uncompressed raw wave or MP3 based on the based on your choice. So it doesn't matter though uh, whether you're using a Rode Wireless Go. The Rode Wireless Go version two also records internally uncompressed wave if you want to, but none of that really matters. What matters is that you have a microphone being fed into the camera. Uh, so this way, the audio that the audience is hearing, they're hearing it, you know, coming directly from you through the camera and that audio video signal is being transferred via the HDMI into the Camlink uh, 4K capture card, which is then being processed and converted by your computer using OBS Studio. Now, when you run and install OBS Studio, make sure all that stuff is connected. You have your dummy battery powering your camera because the battery life on the Canon EOS M6 Mark II uh, tends to be about 30 to 40 minutes. Um, and also the other downside, as, as you may already know, there's actually two major downsides with recording video on the camera. That's why we're using the solution. Uh, outside of the fact that when you have clean HDMI, uh, you can't even record. But when you can record on your, on your Canon EOS M6 Mark II, you have a 30 minute record limit. And after about 40 to 50 minutes of continuous 4K recording, the camera is going to overheat. To bypass all of that, uh, Canon is assuming that if you're serious about recording video, you're not going to be doing it on the camera, but on an external device, i.e., like a computer. And so you got all that set up, you got your HDMI feed going into your computer, and then from there you fire up OBS Studio. Now, I've already uh, got it up and running right now. One of the things that you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna click on Add. Right here in Sources, you're gonna click on Add. You're gonna wanna go to, uh, what it says here, um, I've already added a video capture device. So when you click on Video Capture Device, you click on OK. Um, I'm gonna click cancel because I've already edited it here. And then from here, you wanna go to properties. From properties, you're gonna wanna select which devices. In this case, is the Cam Link 4K. Uh, and so uh, this way, it knows exactly where to source the audio and video. Um, and um, everything else you can leave as standard. You click OK. I'm gonna click cancel because I'm already uh, rolling with that. Uh, and so once that's set up, one of the other things that you may wanna do is go to settings. And then from settings, you wanna look at video uh, and uh, just make sure your resolution is at 4K, which is 3840 by 2160. Um, and then you also wanna look at your output. Now, when it comes to streaming, um, these are the settings that I have that tend to work best, 2500 kbps, audio bit rate of 160. When it comes to recording, you select your video destination, um, your standard um, video recording directory is going to be uh, your user and then videos. And then from there, in terms of recording quality, what I like to do is indistinguishable quality, large file size, MP4, and encoder using hardware. Click OK or click Apply. Once you have that set up, all you have to do is just press Start Recording. Right now it says Stop Recording because I'm recording on the computer right now as I am doing this video. 
Now, in order to do your live stream, now that you've got your recording going on your computer, you've got a clean 4K image, now what you want to do is you want to tell OBS to then transmit the signal out to uh, for live streaming. The way you do that is first go here, click on Start Virtual Camera. Once Virtual Camera is started, now open up Zoom. So from here, Zoom is open, start a new meeting. And then when you start a new meeting, join computer with audio, you're going to select your video source as OBS virtual camera. And from here, start video. And suddenly you will see that both your OBS is recording and your, uh, uh, cam uh, then your Zoom meeting is able to see, uh, your Zoom meeting is able to see your video feed signal. And then from there, you're good to go you are streaming and recording at the same time. And so I hope you found this uh, uh, helpful. Um, it's rather straightforward and simple. Now, if at any point, uh, just make sure that you don't, once Zoom, not Zoom, once OBS has started and it's recording, don't mess with it. Let it run, let it do its thing. It's the first thing you start up and it's the last thing you shut down. And so in the case of my Zoom meeting, once I'm done with the Zoom meeting, I go ahead and close that out and meeting for all, or in this case, you just leave the meeting. And then from here, once you're done, you click on stop virtual camera. And so no longer are you using the zoom meeting uh, because, or uh, it could be zoom. It could be YouTube, whatever you're uh, um, broadcasting to. And so, and then from there you click on stop recording uh, and then your file will be saved locally on the computer. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. You know where to find me. I hope this was helpful.